Hello and welcome to Fire of Learning. I'm Justin. The Middle East, 628 AD. The two great powers of the region, the Eastern Roman Empire, known also as the Byzantine Empire, and Sassanid Persian Empire, have just agreed to peace after a long and strenuous war. For the past 26 years, the two empires have fought tooth and nail over the territory here, with Rome fighting for its very survival. Both empires are now weak and desperately need time to recover, and finally, with this peace agreement, the opportunity to do so has come. Or so they think. As their war was taking place, major events were occurring to the south among a people known as the Arabs. A burst of conquest that would spread from Spain to India in less than a century was about to be unleashed. In that time, the Arabs would go for the Grand Roman City of Constantinople itself, the ultimate conquest. But when this fight came, the Eastern Romans would have a secret weapon in their arsenal to defend their great city. Greek fire, a weapon nothing short of a medieval flamethrower, a weapon which may have changed the course of history and saved the empire many times. Before we begin, I would like to thank Garrett S. Byrne and Eric Thurston of Forestdale for being our most recent Patreon supporters. They join the supporters who make these videos possible. In Arabia, in the first half of the 7th century, the religion of Islam had just been founded. It brought a unity to the Arab people that had never before been seen. The successors of the Prophet Muhammad now intended to harness this energy to build a mighty empire. The warriors of Islam would march to bring the world under their rule, starting with the lands of these two adjacent empires. The Persians, who at the time followed a religion called Zoroastrianism, and the Romans, who had now been Christians for three centuries. Both of these empires had dominated the region for over half a millennium. Over the next few decades, the Islamic Caliphate would expand rapidly under skilled leadership, taking their foes by surprise and overwhelming both of these empires at the same time. The cities of Damascus, Jerusalem, Antioch, Ctesiphon, Alexandria, and others all fell to them, until eventually, the Islamic Caliphate had toppled Persia entirely, crippled Byzantium, and stretched from modern Tunisia to modern Iran. With such victories as these by the 670s, the Muslim Caliph Muawiyah now had his eyes on the grand prize, the city of Constantinople, the capital of the Eastern Roman Empire, the center of Eastern Christianity, and arguably the greatest city in the world at that time. However, the Romans and their emperor Constantinos IV, or in English Constantine IV, were determined to defend the great city. Sometime in 674, the Siege of Constantinople began. Historians aren't entirely sure when because this period was so chaotic that no one really had time to write history down, but thankfully, enough important details were recorded to tell this story. The Arabs knew quite well, one does not simply walk into Constantinople. It was heavily fortified and very well defended. Even in times of desperate weakness, the Byzantines could almost always count on the city's defenses. Still, the Arabs were determined and faithful, but they couldn't have accounted for another detail. Even if they didn't fear the walls of the city, they were still in for a nasty surprise. During this battle, the Romans presented their secret weapon, as I said, essentially a medieval flamethrower. They called this weapon Pier Thalassion, that's Greek, but perhaps you recognize the words, Pier meaning fire, related to pyro, and Thalassion, sea related to a word sometimes used in English, thalassic. Sea fire, or also pier romaicon, Roman fire. There were many names for this weapon, but the name we use in English came from the later crusaders, who called it Greek fire. Ironically though, this name likely applied to another different, similar weapon, not the weapon discussed here, but still came to apply to this weapon later on. Regardless of what we call it, what was it? How did it work? What did it do to the Arabs and the other invaders who felt its wrath? During this siege of Constantinople, these flamethrowers were mounted on ships. When the Arab ships sailed into the waters surrounding the city, the Romans dispatched their ships and used a weapon on them. The Arab ships were naturally made of wood. 
the fire devastated their fleet. Not only did it hit the ships, but the actual substance stuck to the ships and sailors, and even floated on water and remained burning, causing chaos among the Arab fleet. The siege of Constantinople would last for four years until finally the Arabs were defeated and left. The Byzantines clearly owed their victory to this weapon. But how did a flamethrower end up on a medieval battlefield? Well, no one knows for sure. It was a closely guarded secret. The minority of people who did know the secret could be certain of the death penalty if they ever shared the information. That is, if you weren't taken by a higher power first. Some legends held that the secrets to Greek fire came directly as a gift from God, and that he who shared the secrets would be struck down by the Almighty. Not surprising given the fact that the survival of the empire was dependent upon the weapon on multiple occasions. Selling the secret would be selling out your country. Byzantine Emperor Romanos II once even said, Three things must never reach enemy hands. Byzantine imperial regalia, a royal princess, and Greek fire. However, today, experts in medieval warfare have been able to come up with some reasonable guesses as to how the weapon came about. Let's backtrack. As one might guess, fire has been used in warfare likely since the dawn of warfare itself. It seems that as far back as the 9th century BC, armies of the Middle East had figured out how to create effective flaming artillery and arrows, both of which were used in the Mediterranean world and Near East ever since. Similar inventions came about in East Asia as well. In the Peloponnesian War, a war fought between different Greek city-states basically, there is clear evidence that a very primitive and bulky flamethrower was used in battles such as the Battle of Delium. However, Greek fire itself seems to have been produced only shortly before the Siege of Constantinople of 674 by a scholar living in Syria named Kalinikos. When his homeland was conquered by the Arabs, he fled to the capital to share his discovery with the emperor. At least, there are no known records of Greek fire specifically prior to this, but keep in mind, records in this dark age are often unclear for important public details, let alone state secrets. Here's basically how it's believed to have worked. A flammable liquid was likely heated, pressurized, and pumped through a tube called a siphon in Greek, a siphon. The pressure caused the liquid to shoot out of the nozzle. Underneath the nozzle was a kind of flame, which would light the liquid as it was ejected. Different operators of the weapon knew only how to run their own specific job, meaning even they did not know how the whole thing functioned. According to accounts of it, many of which were from enemies, the liquid appears to have stuck to things, floated on water, some have even said that it burned underneath water, and caused a large amount of smoke and what is described as thunder. Because of accounts like this and comparisons to other technology of the day, scholars have proposed that the liquid was made from a variety of ingredients, with the most popular theories focusing on naphtha or a kind of crude petroleum being the main component. Also worth noting, this liquid was also oftentimes used in a kind of medieval Byzantine terracotta hand grenade, which shattered on impact and spread the fiery liquid around. In the 9th century, a kind of portable weapon was created for use on land, called a chirosiphon, or hand siphon. And this was much more like a true modern flamethrower. It was used specifically to target siege equipment. It has often been compared to a medieval napalm. In fact, the modern word napalm comes from naphthenic acid and palmitic acid. I'm sure you can imagine the horror of trying to sail up to the great city with the enemy Droman ship coming towards you. Some Greek soldiers on the enemy vessel pointing a strange looking tube weapon at you, and then suddenly, Favorite Sun starts playing on the enemy ships, and a cloud of fire is ejected which covers your ship. Your ship begins to catch on fire, you're in the middle of the water in hostile territory, possibly wearing armor. You see this stuff, from your view, lighting the water on fire. It probably did not end well. Keep in mind as well how superstitious people in this age were. It must have been seen as magic or dragon fire. The weapon had obviously made an impression on the Byzantines, and they continued to use it against their foes for centuries. It was used on the Arabs once again in 717, and on multiple other occasions, and also on the Slavs, the Bulgarians, the Rus, and even on each other in civil wars. 
Byzantium's enemies would attempt to recreate the weapon, but never quite learned the secrets. Their inventions never quite compared to what the Byzantines had made. Some, such as the Bulgarians, were even able to capture some siphons and the Greek fire liquid, but were never able to figure out how to reverse engineer it. It appears that sometime around the 12th or 13th century, even the Byzantines lost the secret to making it. These were especially tumultuous times for the Eastern Roman Empire, and evidently, the consequence of the secret being kept so well was that it was eventually lost. As I mentioned earlier, the Crusaders reported the use of Greek fire when they besieged Constantinople themselves in the early 13th century, but most scholars believe this to have been a different weapon. The city of Constantinople, and with it, the Roman Empire, would fall only a few centuries later, in 1453 AD. Perhaps not even Greek fire could have saved them from this fate. Even if it were still in use, this was the age when a new weapon which could have challenged it was making its debut, gunpowder. I have a full documentary on the history of the Byzantine Empire coming. We'll be sure to mention Greek fire as we discuss all of the history surrounding these events. 